Vediamo. Back and forward. 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 So shall we start? My name is, so first of all, I hope can, you can hear me well. So my name is Mario Ciancarini. I work uh, in uh, Inel Energy Company in the group strategy function. Today I will try to use those 10 minutes giving you before a quick overview of what we do and why we need that we use uh, climate data to deliver adaptation plan. And then after I will uh, quickly give you some uh, inside of what are our main uh, point of attention, things we are trying to improve or we would like to, to have uh, a support from the scientific community and from uh, other stakeholders. First of all, I agree what was mentioned before, the adaptation for us and in general is not a kind of one-time action, it's a process. This is why what you are seeing now, it's our main <coughs> steps to deliver our adaptation plan. And uh, starting from the climate hazard assessment, here there is a point, interest, interesting point, because uh, we are into a long collaboration with ICTP. We are working in uh, gathering both data from, and uh, understanding data from global climate model and regional climate model to do both analysis at low resolution and higher resolution. So for us, the first step, of course, is to understand which kind of hazards we will face, which kind of hazards are important to us. So we had de developed matrices in which we have uh, uh, mapped our technologies. So we are talking about power plant for power productions, power grids. We have both renewable and thermal power plants. And then we mapped all the phenomena important for us. So skipping uh, for a moment on the right side of these slides. For us are important both chronic changes because those affect uh, for example, power demand, the temperature impact on power demand, but also, for example, the effect on power production because the availability of resources can change, of course, the renewable productions or also the efficiency of thermal power plants. And of course, we are affected by a wide range of acute phenomena that impact us through uh, business interruption of damages. So for us, it's very important to develop uh, ad hoc metrics can fit in our vulnerability modeling. And this is why one of the important points for us is to find opportunities to collaborate in developing, in developing the sectorial metrics. Because for example, right now we have our metrics, but it would be very useful to have metrics shared at sectorial level to set some standards. And make you an example, to assess the impacts of heat waves on our underground cables, we correlated the relationship with the temperature, rain, and other variables with our fault, and we get uh, the definition of a wave that is correlated with our fault. For us, this is really important because this leads us to the other point that to deliver adaptation, we need local analysis. The second step for us is to assess vulnerability. As I said, we have several kind of uh, assets the most difficult one for us, the most challenging one, are the distributed assets because are heterogeneous. Let's think about power grids, different level of quality, materials, solutions among, around the world. We have a footprint quite wide. We are in Italy, in Spain, and also in some countries of Europe, but also South America, for example, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, but also North America with our wind power plants, renewal, renewable power plants and storage. And we have also business development in Asia, in Africa. So this is why for us it's important that we are doing it a uh, cover, a global coverage of our data. And so this is why we work both on global analysis. So we delivered indexes using global climate models, at low resolution to have an overview of the risk, prioritize the areas where some phenomena are more important than others in terms of change and potential impact. Then we need to downscale to local level. And we go to one of the, uh, no, I would say, a, a classic of the points that we raise. Oh, we need data with higher resolution. Of course, we need data via resolution. 
but I really would like to highlight what has been already mentioned. Of course, the higher resolution is not always the solution <laughs> because we face with uncertainties and sometimes we find that sometimes you, bet, you can have better information from a, an high level uh, view and then you have to be able to interpret what's coming from higher resolution data. This is why we would like to have uh, always uh, a, uh, an understanding of the uncertainties. What I'm seeing in the market, for example, that there are a lot of private companies selling services, climate services, like a black boxes. So to me, for example, it's important to, uh, to have the support for us and for the older stakeholders to have a kind of guidelines on how to deal with this kind of uncertainties. For example, what I'm trying to do internally is to translate the language of the uncertainty analysis also in a taxonomy, helping decision maker understanding this is a directional in, uh, insight. Up, down, you can say the positive, negative, you cannot say the magnitude. This is something good for decision making, this is not useful. But for me to try to give a guideline, a set of guidelines would help really in deliver adaptation because some companies now are kind of confused on how to use data and finish to spend money for data that are not really uh, uh, useful. Another point interesting for us since I talked about uh, renewable production, for example, is okay, I understand the average changes in a year, but we are also really uh, interested in understanding how will change uh, the interannual variability, how seasons will change, will change, seasons will change. So uh, as you can imagine, if the water is concentrated, the water availability in one month instead of 12 uh, could make a lot of difference. We are trying to study and understanding which metrics to use to really understand what's going on could be very interesting for us. And coming back to the point of uncertainty, you know, a, I would quote the, solution, the selection of an ensemble. We are working with ICTP to understand the best way to select our ensemble of models. Sometimes it's hard to find, for example, a good selection all over the world for RCP 4.5. We would try and the companies we will need, will need to enrich as much as possible the information also on those kind of scenarios. Because when we go to adaptation, we would like to give as much information on alternative scenarios. Because then we divided our possible options of adaptation between the opportunity to increase resiliency or to leverage on uh, response management. As has been mentioned before, of course, sometimes the solutions or the measures of adaptation are measured at need times, required times. So sometimes we have to decide if we want to push more on the response uh, or we, we have to push both on the resiliency and response. So having more information on what's going to happen in alternative scenarios and also, this is another point I would like to highlight, in the next 10 years, 20, 15 years is very important. What I'm saying, for example, that uh, sometimes another thing, so people are going to take a decision only when face you know, the, the hazard. And if you tell them we are going to face something in the next 30 years, maybe they will not follow you. There are other priorities, pandemic, financial constraints. Well, for us, understanding and working on attribution, understanding what's going to happen in the recent past and the next 10 years will really help companies and drive their efforts. For example, combining insight from decadal models and climate models, because this is something that our management is, is asking a lot. We would like to understand better because when you do a plan, you have to invest now for the next 10 years and sometimes we face a lot of challenging in trimming a good uh, cost-benefit analysis and make them understand uh, that there are some priorities that must be challenged, uh, must be faced now. So for us, for example, shed some lights in those short, let's say short period would be very interesting. And then I would conclude, I guess I'm out of time, uh, with some ideas could be interesting on adaptation side, for example, would be helpful to me include in those kind of studies for adaptation also some case studies developed with uh, the stakeholder demonstrating how to apply in, con in concrete no? in practical uh, way those kind of insights and uh, for example how to uh, 
uh, develop solution. I made the last example for five, since we mentioned five wildfire risk. For wildfire risk, we overlapped layers of uh, uh, land cover with five weather indexes and layer of our assets. This is because understanding the vulnerability of the territory would be uh, a plus for us. Another idea that came in my mind, and I will conclude, for a company, for example, would be useful to direct uh, uh, priorities to have also an overview of the uh, vulnerability of a territory. Let's think about if we are be able to make an atlas of climate change, also an atlas uh, of vulnerability. So maybe uh, an heavy rain could impact differently for flood or for other, uh, for other hazards in different regions. So this would be helpful in direct when we have a lot of uncertainty. Let's go practical on the meat. So thank you all and sorry thank for you. Uh, <laughs>